Good afternoon and welcome to Wallace Field here in Victoria, British Columbia for this Coastal Cup matchup between the University of Victoria Vikes and the Trinity Western Spartans. My name is Isaac Leroy, I'll be your filmer, commentator and live stream director today for this matchup on a wonderful, wonderful afternoon in Victoria. Sunny and a perfect day for rugby here in the nation's capital. The game scheduled for 2.30 p.m. kickoff will get going here in just one moment. Two weeks ago, the University of Victoria picked up a victory against the Trinity Western Spartans in a matchup that started quite even, but ended up being a dominant victory for you, Vic. As we will get going here, after some introductions and national anthems. So welcome, thank you for tuning in. We hope that it is a eventful and entertaining match here this afternoon. So we're bound to get underway here shortly. And UVic with the starting lineup. And TWU starters on the field, ready to get this match kicked off very shortly. Again, thank you for joining us. You can see both teams, both squads, 
wearing beautifully designed jerseys in recognition of this National Day for Truth and Reconciliation here in Canada. I'm not so sure about the TWU side, but I know that the University of Victoria jerseys will be auctioned off after the match with proceeds from this auction going towards recognition of this day. As it will be TWU number 12, Deschepi Dutois, to kick off this game here in Victoria, British Columbia to the University of Victoria Vikes. And the game is underway with Giuseppe Dutois' kick to the far right-hand side of the field. Taken well by Uvic. With an immediate line break there from Uvic as they move into TWU territory. With number nine, Chris Gamage, passing the ball off. As Uvic, but the ball's turned over. Big hit there by number four, Merlin McLeod on Uvic. And the ball knocked on by TWU. A big start there by Uvic, ball stolen in the scrum, in the rock, I should say, but recovered after a knock-on. So it will be the first scrum of the game here to the University of Victoria Vikes. Number nine, Chris Gamage will put the ball in, and Uvic will look to threaten here just inside TWU half. Big hit there from Uvic. The scrum is wheeling. And it will be a penalty to TWU right off the bat. Wheeling the scrum is the call. So Trinity Western will have an opportunity to kick into Uvic territory. So the first line out of the game being thrown by number two, Joe Garoza on Trinity Western. And it is taken well. With Trinity Western moving back into their own half but recovering the ball. But a knock on once again by the Spartans. As Uvic moving into Trinity Western Territory once again, but not taken well there. 
as ball comes out to the back of the scrum for TWU. As Uvic moving through that Trinity Western line, and they will kick the ball. Taken well by Trinity Western, but lost and forced out by Uvic. As the line out, thrown by Jordy Auger, is taken well by Uvic. Chris Camage out the back of the scrum. Passes on. Once again, as Uvic look to move deeper into Trinity Western territory. As a penalty to you, Vic, here. So they will kick the touch. Alex Gamage with a kick that I believe they're saying was not out. No, it will be considered a lineout. So Uvic will have the ball deep in Trinity Western territory. Right along their five yard line as their mall looks to push into the try zone of Uvic. With advantage being called. as they look to push over the Trinity Western try line. But good tackling here by Trinity Western. As it goes up wide, and Uvic will score. Moving through the phases there, Uvic. Try scored by number 14, Lockhart McGregor, on the right-hand side of the field. As Uvic moved that ball from left to right, finding that open space on the wing, and scoring the try.
as play gets underway again. And Uvic recovering the ball. We'll look to get out of their end. And a penalty awarded to Uvic. Here with Alex Gamage to kick to touch. Coming right by me and into touch successfully. With the lineup taken quickly by Uvic, into the hands of Chris Gamage. And out to the wing, but held on there, almost knocked on by Uvic. But the ball held on to in possession. As Uvic once again threatening in Trinity Western Territory. But it is knocked on there by Uvic. Or, no, not considered a knock on by the referee. With Uvic playing out on the wing. And rocked over well by Trinity Western. And they've stolen the ball. Isaiah De Piazza with the steal. But it will be another penalty awarded to Uvic. I believe in the ruck. So it will be Alex Gamage to kick to touch here for the Vikes. And the kick there putting them right on the 20 meter line of Trinity Western. Line out taken well, with Uvic forming the mall and trying to push their way into Trinity Western territory. As the mall collapses and Chris Gamage plays it out from the back. As Uvic looks to go out wide to the right wing, but the ball is lost in contact. By Morgan DiNardo. So the line out by Trinity Western goes long and Uvic recovers the ball. They will look to move it out wide again, which they do, but a missed pass. As some big hits here early in this game. With the ball leaking out once again, but Uvic recovering and threatening here deep in Trinity Western Territory. But the ball pops out again. So Trinity Western will kick this ball with a big tackle and well played by Trinity as the ball back to Trinity Western touch. And the referee will come back for something, an injured player And we hope that he's okay. It does not sound very good. Anybody 
really hungry? Go down to the end of the field for concessions and a beer garden. Now. Hopefully uh, the picture quality is a bit better. Again, it's tricky uh, being it, being up here by yourself, doing everything at once. So balancing, trying to move the camera while adjusting the settings at the same time. But hoping that is a little bit better for everyone. As Giuseppe Dubois with the kick into Uvec hands. Morgan DiNardo with the line break there. As Uvec moves once again deep into Trinity territory. And out to the wing moves Uvec. With a penalty conceded by the Vikes. And kicked two touch by Trinity Western successfully. So it will be Trinity Western ball just inside their half after the penalty conceded by the Vikes. Again, 5-0, 15 minutes into this game. And Trinity Western with their first sustained possession of the game, but knocked on once again, just inside their own half. Yeah. 
So, Uvic scrum here with Chris Gamage to play in, but scrum will be reset. Referee did not like what she was seeing. Again, something to focus on will be this scrum. Both teams with heavy packs, but Trinity Western winning the first scrum penalty of the game on the first scrum uh, earlier. So Chris Gamage put the ball in. It comes out cleanly, and he plays it off to the wing, through the hands, and out to the right-hand side into contact. Played once again by Gamage. And big run there by Merlin McLeod, I believe. And Uvic plays once again out to the left wing. But Trinity Western recovering this ball. So some sloppy play on both sides here to start the game. Being dominated by UVic in Trinity Western territory. As uh, Trinity Western will look to get some sustained possession here and move into the UVic half. Trinity Western through the hands of their number nine, Brady Hope. Hoping that he is all right. And the Trinity Western player is up on their feet, walking off the field. So glad to see that they're able to walk off with the help of a trainer, but under their own power. Looks like maybe a head knock of some sort there. So, Uvic scrum won cleanly and moved out to the wing. But the ball stolen by Trinity Western and a big hit there by Uvic. believe that was Owen Kokan. And Morgan DiNardo with the recovery for the Vikes. As Uvic plays the ball down the right-hand side of the field. With a knock-on to Trinity Western once again. Must be their fourth or fifth of the game in their own territory. So, a scrum to Uvic once again. Well, he's coming home from a late night out in France. He's 
Again, five nothing. Nineteen minutes into this game. Again, my score clock on the stream slightly altered because of the injury time that we've had. And I will adjust that now. So, UVic scrum on the far right-hand side of the field, deep in Trinity Western territory. As they look to get into the points for the second time today. With the try being scored. Believe that was number six, Brendan Kim, with the score. Pushing himself over the line just to the left. Ah, no. Announcers here on the field are saying number five, Murdoch Casey scored that try. Just to the left of the Trinity Western goalpost. Again, hard for me to see the numbers through this small viewfinder I'm looking at on the camera. And that kick will be converted by UVic number 10, Alex Gamage. So the score will now be 12 to nothing, 20 minutes into this game here in Victoria, British Columbia. UVic with the lead, coming out strong and dominating possession here in the start as Trinity Western will kick off, taken Poorly by Uvic, but it's gone backwards. Yes! And conceded a penalty. So Trinity Western will have the ball with most likely a kick to touch and line out here deep in Uvic territory. Which is what they will do. So it will be a Trinity Western lineout. With their number two, Joe Garoza, throwing. And the lineout taken well by Trinity. As they are threatening here on the five meter line of UVic. And it looks like a penalty conceded by Trinity right on the goal line of UVic. Apologies for that pull that's so inconveniently in the way of our shot. But that is what we have. So it will be a kick to touch. No, it will not make touch. Trinity Western will retain possession of this ball. Moving down the wing, and a big tackle there by Uvic. As that kick not making touch. So Trinity Western with a second opportunity here in Uvic territory. And they will look to capitalize. Oh, 
with a little bit of a poor pass there from Trinity Western. And the ball looks like it has been recovered by Uvic, which it has been. So seemingly a game of errors plaguing Trinity Western to start this game. Some knock-ons deep in their territory and some penalties conceded when they are threatening as Uvic will kick. Taken well by Connor Gibbons on the 10 meter line of the Trinity Western half. Um, and another knock on by Trinity Western. So Uvic will once again have a scrum here on the 10 meter line of Trinity Western because of that knock on. And the ball does come out. Remember Trinity Western won the first penalty as a line break here by Shane Rickley Crindle. Good tackle by Trinity Western there deep as he was about to score and a great run there by Shane Rickley Crindle from Uvic but it looks like it has been knocked on by the Vikes so a Trinity Western scrum is what it will be on the five meter line of the Spartans half. The speed of play from Uvic seems to be a little bit too much for the Spartans at the moment, but they're making good defensive stops when they need to. As the scrum won cleanly, and Trinity Western will most likely kick the ball here, which they do, and it goes out on the just in front of the 22 meter line so number two Jordy Auger will throw for the UVic lineup on the 22 meter line or in between the 22 meter line and it will be taken well by UVic as they look to threaten once again here in Trinity Western Territory. With another good run there by Shane Rickley Crindle. And Maintaining possession, looks like possible obstruction, but not signaled by the referee. So Uvic with possession still, as they look to put up five more points here, 28 minutes into this first half. And the ball is broken through, and I believe that was Merlin McLeod. University of Victoria Bikes, who has scored once again. So a really dominant start here by the Bikes. Leading 17 to nothing, ending the conversion here. Uh, Ryder E. Corns scoring that try. My apologies. Again, well impossible for me to see through this viewfinder. So that's number eight, Ryder E. Alex Kevich, which goes straight through the uprights. And you get down leading 19. Yeah. 
No? Yeah. Cool. Okay, take care, bro. Again, apologies for this uh, choppy audio. Could be the connection. Hoping that it doesn't persist throughout the stream, but unfortunately out here at Wallace Field, there is no ethernet connection. So we're using uh, cellular data here to stream and you never know exactly how reliable that is. So not much we can do until hopefully we get an internet connection out at Wallace Field. So Trinity Western looking to build some phases here and get some points on the board as they trail 19 to nothing here, 31 minutes into this game. with the ball in Trinity Western hands. Out to the right-hand side wing. And a good move there, but backwards it goes. Trinity Western though, looking the most threatening they have all game. Deep in Uvic territory here. as they look to put points on the board for the first time. Down the left-hand side goes TWU. But they are forced out. Forced out of bounds by the Vikes. With time being called off as the referee will seemingly look or chat with her line judge, maybe some foul play that the line judge has spotted. But, so the referee chatting with both captains behind the pole, I'm trying to see exactly what she's doing. I believe it was just a conversation, maybe trying to nip something before it continues to happen. But it will be UVic lineout after Trinity Western was forced out of bounds on the seven and a half meter line of UVic as they look to get the ball out of their territory. Again, good sustained pressure there by Trinity Western for the first time in the game. And they will draw a penalty. They go quick and they will move it out to the right wing. And they will score. So that all set up by Trinity Western's first sustained pressure of the game in UVic territory. Line out won by UVic, but then penalty conceded. Trinity Western taps and goes quickly 
and moves it out to the right wing to put their first points of this game on the board. So 35 minutes into this game, Trinity Western trailing 19 to five, pending the conversion here by Giuseppe Dutois. The kick is up, but it is missed wide right. So the score remains 19 to five for UVic here. With four and a half minutes remaining in the first half, UVic will kick off. Alex Gamage with the kick back to Trinity Western here. Taken well by Trinity Western and kicked right back into UVic territory. As UVic moves back into Trinity Western half. As some big contact there by Trinity Western, UVic keeps possession of the ball as they move to the right wing of the field. And Chris Gamage will pass that ball out as he gets smoked by a Trinity Western player. And UVic still with possession, moving into the university, the Trinity Western University's 22. Knocked around, and a penalty against the Spartans will make the referee bring the play back to the location of that foul right on what looks like the 22 meter line of the Spartans. So, Uvic most likely with the kick to touch here. And it is a well-kicked ball. Looks like it will be a line-out for UVic practically on the five-meter line. So threatening once again UVic, looking to respond after giving up those five points to Trinity Western. Line-out taken well, and the mall formed, although Trinity Western with a big pushback, ball comes out, and UVic will look again to push into some more points here right on the Trinity Western goal line. But well defended by TWU so far, taking the contact well. With Ubik moving to the left-hand side of the field, and it's knocked on by Ubik. So it will be scrum to Trinity Western here. Western, as they will most likely kick to get the ball out of their end zone, and kick to touch, again, right over the 22 meter line, which most likely will be the last play of this half, 
right around 15 seconds to go. So you then look to finish off this half with some points as the lineout locked, locked on it looks like, by Uvic. And Trinity Western will get possession back here in their own half. They move down the right hand side of this field. Line break by Trinity Western, but taken well as Trinity Western breaking free. But the attack was made by Uvic.
Okay, welcome back to Wallace Field for the second half of this match between the University of Victoria Vikes and the Trinity Western Spartans. UVic leading 19 to 5 at the half. So should be a entertaining finish to this game. With 40 minutes to play. As we will have Alex Gamage to kick off for Uvic. As we get underway. And Taken poorly by Trinity Western, but ball went backwards as the referee. So, no knock on. As Trinity Western most likely looking to come out hard and fast here and put some points up on the board early in this second half. As they move it out to the right wing of the field with a big hit put on the Trinity Western player by the UVic, but they retain possession, moving just over into University of Victoria Vikes territory here. With some good phase work here by Trinity Western, moving the ball forward. But the ball knocked on there by Trinity Western. Another error in handling by the Spartans. So ball to Uvic, Uvic scrum just inside their half. with Chris Gamage at scrum half to place the ball in. And another scrum in which Trinity Western looks to be winning, but the ball comes out for Uvic. A kick there by Matt Bennett, I believe, but taken well by Trinity Western. So, TWU ball, just inside their half. As they're veering dangerously close to that edge, but staying inside. As Uvic looks to add on to their lead and Trinity Western looks to close the gap. With a little grubber kick there from Trinity Western, chased well by Matt Bennett. With Uvic possession and a good ruck there by Uvic to retain the ball just inside their own half here. As Chris Gamage passes over to Ryder Heaney Corns and through the hands, but given away there, good steal by I believe that was Giuseppe Dutois from Trinity Western. So a couple mistakes here early by Uvic. But holding strong so far. As they look to defensively hold Trinity Western off. In this game. But Trinity Western threatening here. 
inside the 22 of University of Victoria Vikes. But knocked on, I believe. No penalty signal. But could not see precisely what the referee says. Yeah, I believe that was a knock on. So it will be a UVIC scrum. Ball recovered well with Trinity Western threatening inside the 22. So UVIC scrum here. Inside the 22, another big push by the Spartans. Really good scrumming by them in this game so far with one scrum penalty drawn. As a wasp comes uh, after me here on top of my scaffolding. Maybe I smell good. Apologies. Don't want to get stung this afternoon. Goodness. Apologies. Wasp is really uh, coming after me here. My days. Must be uh, something smelling good around here. So Trinity Western threatening once again. Oh my gosh. But ball recovered by Ubik. As they will kick the touch. Goodness gracious. So, Uvic line out. Taken well by the Vikes. But knocked on quickly. And number 16, Seth Klassen, will be subbed on for Trinity Western. And quick sub at the start of the half, but number two, Joe Garosa comes off with number nine, Brady Howlett to place the ball in for the Spartans as their scrum ensues just on the 10 meter line of the Vikes. Messy scrum, but won by the Spartans. As they threaten here in UVic territory, with UVic still leading 19 to five. As of yet, no scoring in the second half. As a great tackle there by number 14, Lockhart McGregor. But a penalty to Trinity Western. They tap and go quickly. Number 10, 
seeing an opportunity. Josiah Laval seeing the opportunity, but stopped by Uvic, played out wide to Trinity Western player, and a penalty once again to the Spartans for high tackle by Matt Bennett. They will tap and go once again. Trinity Western looking to play fast here in the second half. But the penalty conceded by Trinity Western deep in UVic territory, right on the five meter line, giving up possession once again in a threatening opportunity, threatening position. So UVic will kick the touch right over top of me. And time will be off for a sub, I believe. One of the Trinity Western players is bleeding from the nose quite heavily. I believe it's Giuseppe Dutrois. So we will, the medics will tend to him in hopes to get that nose to stop bleeding. And it looks like they have successfully done so. So, Jordy Auger to throw for Uvic here. And they win that line out cleanly. Again, Trinity Western threatening deep in Uvic territory, but conceding the penalty as Uvic will kick not very far, but recovered by the Vikes. And they will enter Trinity Western territory here. And the ball not coming out. And the Spartans will look to tap and go quickly again, as they've done on each and every penalty so far this half. Penalty to you, Vic, not rolling away. I believe. So, Trinity Western once again with the penalty conceded in a threatening position in Vice territory. Alex Garbage will kick the touch. And Trinity Western. We'll try to make a sub. We'll do it next whistle. So line out to you, Vic. Jordy Auger to throw, taken well. Uvic with line speed, moving up into Trinity Western territory, but a penalty. Will they tap and go again? No, they will take this one slow with a sub coming on. Number 22, Cade Dayton, will come on for Trinity Western. Number 19, Tucker Nadeau. And number 17, Brent Hamburg, will come on for the Vikes. With 25 minutes remaining in this second half, the kick to touch not out by Trinity Western. So kicked back to Trinity Western territory by Uvic. As Trinity Western will look to put some points on the board in this second half, bridging the gap closer to the score. Again, Vikes leading 19 to five.
with Trinity Western narrowly avoiding the touch line there, but doing so as they look to move back into the field of play. Penalty to Uvic. I should say penalty against Uvic to the Spartans. As we'll have time off for an injured Uvic player. Hoping that he is all right. As Uvic player Shane Rickley Crindle will come off with a bloody nose. So it will be a blood sub with Henry Down coming in, number 20 for Uvic. And the penalty will be to Trinity Western. So they will kick to touch. It will be Giuseppe Dutrois to do so and it's a well well kicked ball on the 22 meter line of the Vikes Seth Klassen to throw for the Spartans and he does so well line out one by Trinity Western as the Spartans threatening once again, but penalty to the Vikes, conceded by the Spartans, again deep in UVic territory. Compounding of errors for the Spartans in a threatening position, as UVic will kick the touch just about at, half meter, uh, at the halfway line of the field. with Jordi Auger to throw for the Vikes here. As once again, I forget to start my time on the stream, so apologies. We'll reset that at the next whistle, but 56 minutes gone here as Juvek knocks it on. After that UVic knock on, it will be a Trinity Western scrum here at the halfway line of the field. Number nine, Brady Howlett to push the ball in as the scrum collapses. The referee asking for it to be reset. No scrum penalty needed. <laughs> With Uvic still leading the game, 19 to five, 22 minutes remaining. As we will try the scrum once again. Taken cleanly this time. Scrum wheeled slightly, but the Spartans come away with the ball as great speed there from Lyndon Dugan, but taken to the ground with some ferocity by the Vikes. As the Spartans retain possession, however, in Uvic territory, right around their 22 meter line as the ball comes loose and Uvic has recovered 
So another error in attack from the Spartans here with Uvek looking to kick this ball. Penalty. Penalty against the Spartans here on the 22 meter line. I believe for offside. And Uvik will kick to touch, hoping for the line out. Which they do successfully at, once again, you guessed it, right around the halfway line of the field. So Uvik looking to line out, looking to win and move through the phases. Taken well by the Vikes. As they move up with line speed, pushing over the halfway line. Chris Gamage to play the ball out. Duck down well. Uvik plays a kick up. Looking to be recovered by Matthew Bennett. And it will go to touch. So a line out to the Spartans, but a cool idea by the Vikes there. Those kicks being very difficult and simply just not executed perfectly. As Spartans asking for a sub, but it won't happen at the moment. With Seth Klassen to throw. And not straight. Line out not straight by Seth Klassen. And Uvik will get the ball back as number 20 Kyle Finnan comes into the game for the Spartans. And Uvik will choose the line out. Once Uvik's line outs have been successful today so far, Jordy Auger making some great throws so far in this game. Let's see if they can get another one right on the 10 meter line of the Spartans. And they do not, they do not execute, maybe a little bit of a commentator's curse there. Knocked on by the Vikes in the line out, recovered by the Spartans, ball goes backwards. Spartans play it deep, play it to the right hand side of the field. As they look to close the gap with just around 19 minutes remaining here in this game. As Uvik playing, rocking well, almost recovering the ball, but it remains Spartans possession. I apologize, Uvik does get the ball back. What a fantastic offload, another offload by the Vikes, moving out wide to the left, but stopped by the Spartans. Uvik threatening though. On the five meter line of the Spartans, looking to move in to score some points here. First points they will have scored since early on in the first half. Once again, apologies for this awkward pull. Uvik will move out. Uvik will bust through the line. Uvik will try to get across the try line. Held well by the Spartans so far. Held really well by the Spartans. Rocked over well by the Spartans. But a penalty to the Vikes. Conceded by the Spartans. We'll have a time off for the padding that has fallen off the goalpost. Spartans coach asked for a sub. Number 23, Liam Olsen, will come in for the Spartans. As it looks like the Vikes will be going.
And 17 minutes remaining in this game. The Spartans kick off. The Spartans recover the ball. And the Spartans box kick. And played well by the Spartans. Played really well by the Spartans here. With Uvic pinned deep in their own territory. They will have to kick themselves. No, they will try to get some space out of the end zone. And then kick this ball out. With the ball being kicked, a grubber down to the Spartans. Passed over. Down the left-hand side of this pitch. And tackled well by the Vikes. Recovered by the Vikes. Matthew Bennett down the right-hand wing. But tackled well by the Spartans. Not out of bounds. Not into touch. And now the Spartans recovering the ball, but they themselves going into touch. So it will be a Vikes line out here. As the Westerns, the Spartans asking for another sub, not going to get it. Jordy Auger with the throw, Uvic with the line out one. They try to maul, they move forward, they march forward, they march forward, it collapses. The Vikes threatening here, the Vikes with pace as they move out to the left wing take it, take that ball. through the phases move the vikes jordy auger with the carry chris gamage with the pass with the vikes looking to add on to their 22 points here Moving to the right, tackled well by the Spartans. Spartans defense has been really great, but they offload. The Vikes put the ball down and the Vikes score. Number 19, Tucker Nadeau with the try for the Vikes. And the Vikes will lead this game 27 to five pending a conversion. So with 13 minutes to go in this game, the Vikes will lead 27 to five, pending this conversion by the number 10, Alex Gamage. which is missed wide to the left. So the score remains 27 to five for the Vikes with 13 minutes remaining in this game. Vikes getting the ball back. as Trinity Western will kick this off. Taken well by the Vikes. As Uvic will kick this ball 
to the left-hand side of the field, right-hand side of the field, depending on how you're looking at it. Recovered by Trinity Western. Almost recovered by the Vikes. But Trinity Western plays it well with possession. And number 23 will break through. And number 23, Liam Olsen, with the line break coming out of what seemingly was nowhere. And Trinity Western will put five points up on the board. As Giuseppe Dutois with the kick that is up and it is good. Snuck it right in along the left hand side of the uprights there. And the score with 10 minutes remaining in this game now 27 to 12 for the Vikes. With Trinity Western getting the ball back after that line break and quick score by Liam Olsen. Fantastic run by him. As the Vikes kick off, the Vikes look to recover the ball. But Trinity Western takes it well. Although deep in their own territory. They will most likely kick from here. They will work through some phases first, maybe hoping to get a line break similar to the one they had that just scored them the try. Now they will kick. And it is good. Taken well by the Vikes. With the Vikes looking for some sustained possession here in Trinity Western territory. However, knocked on. Knocked on by the Vikes. And it will be, it will be a scrum to Trinity Western here, which they have looked good in all day. Seventeen meters in the UVic territory. Time will be off though for an injured UVic player. So. Marcus Lott will come on in replacement for, I believe, Lockhart. Lockhart McGregor. So, scrum to the Spartans. Nine minutes remaining in this game as the time is back on. And a big push by the Vikes, but referee asking for it to be reset. I think Vikes fans thought maybe they would be awarded a scrum penalty on that one. But no, says the referee. scrum again with now seven minutes remaining in this game I believe 
time has been called. Ah, time is back on. So for a third time, we will attempt to get this scrum underway. The referee not happy with how the first two have gone. As Trinity Western will place the ball. Big push again by the Vikes. Big push again by the Vikes. And they will be awarded the penalty. The Vikes, with just a massive push, fans thought they could get it the first time to reset the second and to ward it on the third. So the Vikes will get the touch, trying to get as close as they can to the five meter line of targets. And they get to just about there. Again, it will be Jordy Auger to throw for the Vikes. I won't say anything about the first time this time. And it's taken well. The Vikes looks to push into the end zone of the Spartans. So, the score remains 32 to 12 with four minutes remaining in this game. And the Spartans to kick off. And a knock on into touch by the Vikes, so option given to the Spartans. And they will choose the lineup. It will be Seth Klassen to throw for the Spartans. And they will win the lineup. They will move the ball out to the right. And a fantastic run there by the Spartans. Ball played backwards. And a penalty awarded to the Spartans. They will tap and go quickly. And another penalty awarded to the Spartans, who presumably will tap and go quickly again. Looking to get across the UVic line. And Uvic holding strong so far with two minutes remaining in this game. Yes! But the try scored. Try scored by Trinity Western. 
making this a 32 to 17 game here as Giuseppe Dutois will look to kick quickly. As a minute and 30 seconds after this kick is made will be remaining, maybe less. as Giuseppe Dutois to kick with one minute remaining here in the game. And the kick is up. The kick is no good. So the score remains 32 to 17 for the Vikes. With most likely this kick being the last play of the game, if the Vikes can get possession after this kickoff. That is the name of the game for the Vikes now. Getting this ball back and kicking it out as the Spartans look to perform a miraculous comeback here. And The referee will call the game there. So Uvic holds on to win 32 to 17 here at Wallace Field. Thank you very much for watching, as always. And we will see you in two weeks back at Wallace Field after a bye week for Thanksgiving. As always, my name is Isaac Leroy. Thank you so much for listening and have a fantastic rest of your weekend.